Good afternoon, everyone. I'm really glad to be here today. Um, I did not meet uh, in the past Jürgen, the past speaker, but I, I think that uh, the past uh, speech has been really, really interesting. I'm going to uh, talk to you and explain what we are doing. We are ADAP, indeed, and uh, we are totally in line what, with the analysis made by Jürgen. Uh, a few words about myself before starting. Um, I, I have really a legal background, so before becoming uh, in the past with other startups, tech entrepreneur, I was a lawyer. I have a PhD in administrative law, uh, a master in global regulation of markets, and uh, I have several positions as advisor in the public sector. So for example, I am the scientific committee of San Marino, and we help them in adopting the legislation for on blockchain. And um, I'm advisor in the European Legal Tech Observatory on New Technology, and so far and so on. So, um, in the second half of my uh, pitch, I will touch some points that Jürgen has touched, and uh, I will explain how we are tackling those difficulties. Because, for me, in my humble opinion, the past speech is one of the mm, speech that uh, makes more sense uh, in uh, in the last, I think, months that I personally have listened to. So, that said, uh, what we are. Um, uh, doing at Jure. So we do, uh, we are working for the future of contracts, legal contracts of course, and the future of justice, or at least commercial justice. We are working as a legal DAP, as a comprehensive ecosystem, and uh, we would like to explain what we do with uh, a simple explanation of the problems and the solutions. Each one of them is quite detailed, both technologically and legally speaking. I'm going to provide to you just a high-level explanation. If you want to know more, I will be tomorrow at booth number seven, and I'm really happy to uh, go into detail. So first problem, which is a huge one. Uh, we have a kind of macro problem with justice in business. Um, to be really short, uh, OECD World Bank says that more than 1.7 trillion of value is locked in disputes, not efficiently, which is a of course, it's always a number, so it might be too much or too less. But the real point is you might need up to three years or even four for getting one first degree of judgment. And as you know, this is a really big problem for any business. And according to the World Bank, the cost that you are going to sustain for getting justice is between worldwide 25% and 50%. These are just numbers, but if I ask you which is your feeling for your business with everything which is legal, like I need to go before a court and ask for a settlement of a dispute, I don't think any one of you will be, hey, I'm super happy to go to ask this kind of justice. So on the first part, we are building a digital court, let's say, with different hubs. Legally speaking, is legal arbitration. And we are applying one model which is legally binding, uh, also called international law. Um, as you will see, we work with mm, several universities, and there are already some scientific papers speaking about Jure, which is a kind of, we are proud of that, and we are hardly working on that. What does it mean to be really short, okay? Uh, you will find the chance on Jure, even for offline contracts, to open a dispute online, to obtain what legally is a legal arbitration, essentially with a pure online pro procedure. Where does it come blockchain? Only in three specific points in which, in our opinion, it's really important to ensure with different mechanisms, non-corruptibility, which in, in justice is quite relevant, quality, and, uh, um, not, um, and transparency, of course, of the procedure. I'm not going into the detail because there are plenty of papers on that. Uh, at the same time, we have a micro problem with justice. Uh, this is something that mm, normally we are working with, okay, with also institutions, public institutions of countries which are highly problematic. To explain to normal people this problem is, uh, we use this uh, metaphor, this analogy. It's like the Tetris game. You know the Tetris game in which there might be some holes in the screen. The single hole is not going to be a problem, but if you sum up several holes, you get the game over. Today we are in the same situation. If you can't obtain justice for a deal of $500, it's not going to kill you. It's fine, but for a freelancer, for normal people, for normal family, for normal business, if you sum all these small problems that you can't achieve justice effectively and affordably for $300 of, of, of value of a contract, <coughs> if you sum all these problems, you get a big problem. We are inventing what we call micro-justice. This is a more complex stuff that is already built and we are testing with universities, which in substance is a decentralized dispute resolution system 
which is at zero cost for the party, and it, it brings to you a decision about two proposals of dispute resolution in 72 hours. This is the most theoretic part of our project, and that's where the, uh, in this part we have also statistics and physics to work with us, because it's not easy. Third, we have a daily problem with contracts, and one of the most beautiful, theoretically speaking, adopt, uh, use case of blockchain could be what you know better than me, are smart legal contracts. But why? Because contracts at the end of the day, legal agreements, are just uh, you know, uh, ink on a paper. So you can break a contract, and then you need to ask the enforcement before a court. And then it comes again the problem I was telling you before. So on this side, our decision has been to reinvent, let's say, the legal contracts with a different approach. To be really short on that, uh, I make you this example. We don't see lawyers or companies in two years, even 10 years, draft their own smart contracts. Even today, companies, they don't do their own website. They go to a web agency, or maybe they use Wix for creating a website. So what we are creating here is a smart legal contract marketplace, which is really like a kind of Wix for smart legal agreement, which means that the company can go there, pick up a template made by lawyers, which are paid for the work they did, and activate a smart legal contract in 10, 20 minutes. This is the general, let's say, explanation of what we are doing. Let's come now on the practical side, because everyone often in this industry try to say, oh, we are doing amazing stuff, but they currently did not deliver anything. This is not the case with us. Just to repeat again together, so we are working on the next generation of contracts and the next generation of justice for commercial, at least, uh, agreements and field. Our achievement, we have mm, delivered on the same day of the IO, the first beta platform. If you go today on our website, you are able to create a smart legal contract for several use cases. And you can access to the open layer, which is, let's say, the, uh, mm, the micro justice platform I was mentioning before. And this has been quite interesting. Uh, I will tell you in, in two slides how currently it is being used. We made the first legal tech IO, and we got, uh, independently from the technicality of the argument, a 500% of our subscription, which is an important data, I think, also about how normal people perceive the importance to, of, of, do, of doing these kind of projects. And third, uh, next week, on Wednesday and on Friday, um, we will do, actually, two users. They were not in our roadmap. They are just two community supporters. They are doing the first smart legal contract for backing a car purchase agreement in Austria. So we helped them because, of course, we are the beginning, and we provided the legal assistance with according to Austrian law. And there will be the first smart legal contract in place for backing a car purchase agreement made peer-to-peer -peer and do it by yourself. So there is no law firm, there is no other people. There are just two individuals using a platform exchanging money, which will be in escrow, of course, between party A and party B, until the um, trans um, transfer of the ownership will be done. This is quite important to me also for telling you, well, we delivered something, and some people are using that for something which is pretty delicate. They are going to exchange 10K, mm, 10,000 euro of value after, let's say, one month from our beta, which is still you know, being improved, and so far and so on. Now, um, there it comes the part on which I agree with uh, Jürgen. Um, the dApps today are more a problem than a solution. I would add on what Jürgen has said many things, but today is a pitch for explaining you the high level project we are doing. Just one example. To make a dApp in legal takes much more time than maybe three or four years. I mean, for doing that so that anyone is able to use that easily, like today we use Twitter or Uber, in my opinion, it takes more time than three, four years. But at the same time, if we don't work in that direction, we will have only gambling, casino online on blockchain, which honestly, it doesn't make sense because one of the most interesting parts of this technology can be applied on the legal sector, really, really changing the quality of life of people and really changing also the efficiency of companies. So the question we ask ourselves after 
having done some worldwide records, even if we were originally coming, let's say, alone from the companies based in Switzerland. We are mostly all Italian by origin. We are living in different countries now. So the question we ask ourselves is how we get there? Because we have, we delivered, we are delivering, and we have a really a community that actually is loving what we do. But at the same time, you know, this world is so big. So it's for you, maybe it's the first time you know me or the project. So we are working on something we will call in the future something like blockchain lean startup method or something like that. The name itself is going to be decided. If you like the idea or the approach, I suggest to you to follow us, please, because we are going to work with public, public focus groups in the future, in the upcoming weeks. So what I'm going to anticipate to you, it's absolutely work in progress. So my call for you is, even if you don't like legal sphere, but you like the approach, come and join the discussion. It's for free, and it's just for building up a different model. Why? For me, it doesn't make sense to spend money and keep building something for one year when you, you can't have the chance to get the idea validated. The normal process of a startup passes through validation, pivot, and so far and so on. So my take is, let's work in a different way after we have done a bit of road, and let's call the stakeholders we already have. We have 5,600 lawyers between Europe interested with several uh, or agreements or directly with our newsletter. Let's call them to work with us on specific use case and get the validation before we build the product, when we have the mock-up, the wireframe, and so far and so on. This makes more sense, especially because even if you would be, if you were overfunded in Silicon Valley, to do differently, it doesn't make sense for me. So this topic is what we are currently working on, and it is, mm, it will be translated in a policy <coughs> around the concept of status. About our roadmap of adoption, again, this is just a anticipation. We divide the, fa the phases in three main phases. We will focus on the first one in the next weeks, explaining you how we get with the first around 1,960 stakeholders in our community. If you are interested as individual company or legal, again, follow us and you will you will be able to ask more our um, questions and get involved. Um, just to sum up some points that emerged so far, why, in my opinion, a legal DAP is needed with some principles of decentralization or Web 3.0? Uh, well, in my opinion and in the opinion of all the legal tech association in which I am involved in, in different way, legal is really detailed and, uh, you know, every country at the end of the day uh, has a different law or at least execution of law before the courts and so far and so on. I don't see easily the Uber of legal field in the next years making everyone happy. We think that making a different, uh, creating a Web 3.0 uh, ecosystem in the legal field makes sense both for contract creation and for dispute resolution. Uh, this is what we call blockchain legal revolution, and uh, we are working on that with uh, many universities. Now, today, so uh, I'm announcing two more, but we have other six before February 2020. We are doing the Lab for New Justice with Radboud University in Netherlands with two professors, amazing innovators. We have the European Center for Legal Technology in Pavia University and Padova University, which is a 200 ancient university working with us, and we are doing the agreement with the, not with the faculty, but with the whole university, which are 60,000 of students, because we think it makes really sense to start working with the new generation of these, these new stuff. Otherwise, you, you, you lose the, essentially the, the right timing for, for getting that option. This is the point I was mentioning before. We are selecting in the next period 260 uh, entities between individuals, companies, and legals for working with us about specific use cases. And we have a, quite a good list of supporters, partners, associations, including San Marino, of course, uh, which is a small country, still for 1.6 bi billion of GDP per year, working with us and getting the adoption for our first use cases, uh, and many legal tech associations of different kind. Um, we are working with VeChain. Uh, we like the technological tech, tech solution, we like the business development strategy, and we are the legal 
partner for the entire network of their partners. This is one of our key strategic, uh, let's say, element that we will use for our growth. And currently, we are based, the company is in Switzerland, in Crypto Valley. We are part of the tech team in Bangalore, India, the Indian Silicon Valley, because my CTO and friend is Italian, but he, he has been really successful in technology in India in the past. And we have also two people in China because we came from there. Um, in this period, we are doing a kind of tour for spreading the word of what we have done so far and what we are going to do in the, in the future. The next steps are, we already delivered the first platform, but we are going in six months, so for Q2, latest 2020, to deliver um, specific use cases with the stake, along with the stakeholders on several, these are just examples, smart freelance agreement, smart investment agreement. On that side, we will develop the so what we call the KISS 3.0 agreement. You know what is the KISS? According to Silicon Valley standard, is the investment in a startup essentially done without specific KPIs. We will do that with an escrow chain with some VCs also based in Silicon Valley. And other use cases regarding also the real estate because we have several companies interested in what we do in the real estate field. As per the court layer, we will uh, deliver the first version of the court layer with an hub for this put up to 35K. The first version won't be totally automated, but uh, is going to be used already by some partners we are announcing next month. Uh, thanks for your attention. Uh, what we always say at the end of these speeches, in our opinion, the future of justice, even if technical is more correct than legal, but when I speak with two lawyers are more technical, when in the blockchain field, a, lit a little bit less, in our opinion, is decentralized. If you uh, appreciated what we, uh, are what we are doing, please stop by bo booth number seven tomorrow to sp talk more. And if you want to join our social, especially Twitter, we are constantly updating the community and about our progress. Thank you so much, and I hope to see you tomorrow. Thank you, Alessandro. Thank you very much.